to us. Father God, I pray that you, at your message will lead us tonight and it will touch each and every one of us where we are in our lives and that we will take something from this to um, in the week further to broaden your name and to bring praise to your name and touch other people around us Father God. Uh, amen. 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 <clears throat> All right. Um, I'm, I hope everybody can see me. So as we go deeper um, I felt like, uh, as I was just uh, preparing this today, I felt like the devil is trying to mess with our heads. He's trying to say to us, it cannot be done. He's trying to keep us so busy that uh, with different activities, with different challenges, with different things from all directions, to a point that uh, one forgets uh, that God has given us power, power of free will. So the only thing that I felt I need to say to you based on Psalms 34 is to say to you today, always be intentional. So we're going to take a lot from David. And David was a real it's a real life situation that he was facing and he was intentional with his words. He was intentional with his thoughts. He was intentional with his actions as well. In, a, in, spite, in spite of the situation that he was, he found himself in here on earth, the same earth that you and I are living in. So I just want to say to you, uh, you can just open your app or if you've got a um, uh, paper Bible, open that. And as I'm just trying to unpack what I'm, we're about to deal with, uh, you can continue reading as well. Always be intentional. The devil cannot touch you if you are intentional. He cannot do anything to you if you are intentional. Whatever he may bring to you, he cannot touch your life. He cannot kill you because that's God's decision. So in spite of everything that's happening around you, be careful that the devil cannot change your intentions to his direction. Be careful that the devil cannot make you decide to kill yourself or make you decide to sabotage yourself or make you decide to, to curse God or make you decide to go off God's plan for your life. Because all of us, we have the spirit of God inside us. It is like, an, uh, it is like a, what do you call this thing? Um, there's a thermostat. It's like a thermostat. The Holy Spirit is like a thermostat. He's making sure that we are always within the temperature. We are always within the God's principle for our lives. Amen. So let's jump to it. So... <clears throat> Verses 1 to 3, I read in NIV. I will exhort you, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let me give you a bit of background what was happening here. The armies of the enemy encamped. He was literally in a point of being captured, but he chose to keep his lips from saying, oh my God, I'm dying. These people are killing me. But he changed his confession into saying, I will exalt the Lord at all times. How often do we do this when we face circumstances, when we face a, a verbal abuse, when we face challenges in our job, challenges in our business, challenges in our marriage, challenges in our relationships, challenges with our friends, challenges at school. How often do we say this? How often do we change our confession? Other vision says, bless the Lord. I'm not going to 
Go deeper into it. It's simple as that. Bless the Lord. Thank him. Remember, always, not sometimes. You see, there's something that I love about this verse. It says that his praises will always be on my lips. Not sometimes, you know, not when I feel like it. Always, meaning forever. Not sometimes, not, you know, not when I feel like it. So glory in the Lord. I love that let that part said glory in the Lord. At times you may feel like there's nothing to glory in myself, but rather remember, remember how great your God is. Remember who God is. Remember what God has done. Remember the first metal that among many, many spams that came out of your father, only one, millions of spams, only one made you. That's a miracle on its own. Among many children that are, are not born, among many people that don't have a place to stay, but you have a place to stay. Among many people who have had problems, you don't have that. Among many people who have gone through excellence today, but you didn't. So you glory on the smallest things that God has done for you. The fact that you can see when others cannot see. Glory in that. Praise God for that. The fact that you can wake up in the morning when others didn't wake up. Glorify God for that. Amen. Especially when you feel pressure, remember his goodness. Remember what he has done and bless him. Let's all glorify the Lord. So, I'm giving it to you now, guys. Uh, if you want to add, add. If you want to question, question. Amen. Um, if I can just add to that, there was this thing that we did today during our quiet time um, where you can have, wait, let me just do this, uh, where you have such a blessing in the joy and in the pain because pain is the breeding ground for a relationship with God because only then that you realize that I can't do this in my own strength, my own strength. So you have to rely on God's strength. And through that, you build a relationship with him. And also, it's also the point of joy can only be found in Jesus. There are times, joy is not a feeling. Um, you can feel happy, you can feel sad, you can feel angry. But joy is throughout any circumstance, throughout any problem that you're facing, whether it's good, whether it's bad. Joy should be constant throughout, just like God is constant in your life. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Awesome. All right. You can add, guys. <laughs> Question or pose. It's a Bible study. <laughs> All right. If no one wants to say anything, I'll move to the next slide. All right. Verses 5 to verse 7 says, focus on him. It's one of the points that I mentioned, but I'm going to start by reading the verse. The verses. They looked to him and were radiant. And their faces will never be ashamed. These poor men cried. And the Lord had had him and saved him out of all his troubles. And the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. That is verse, verses 5 to verse 7. So what I picked up on that is that focus on him. Number two, I said there is no shame in God. So never feel like God is not going to accept you. Remember the prodigal son when he came back to his father. He was, not accept, he was not rejected by his father. He's a good, good father. There's a song that says he's a good, good father. Number three, you are accepted as you are. For there's no judgment in God. Five, he doesn't care about your color or your status quo. Or how much, money, how much bank account do you have? Number six, 
He encamps around you. Always. Not sometimes. Always. He, remember our God need us limber, need us slumber or sleep. He doesn't get tired. You know, there is no day, there's no night in God. He lives out of time. Amen. Number seven, discuss with me. Any additions from these verses or previous verses? Um, I would just like to add maybe to, I like the point um, where he pretty much states that you are accepted as you are and there's no shame in God. I think many times we tend to focus on um, pleasing people and earthly things um, and then get sidetracked by wanting to please people and wanting to please um, what society thinks we need to do and forget about what God has made our purpose to be um, for him. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's so it's nice to focus on um, what's important to know that you should focus on God and just know that you are enough because he created you, you know. Maybe why others are still thinking what they're going to say. Um, I like also to add that um, there's something that God that God keeps on emphasizing that David, sorry, that David keeps on keeps on doing here. Uh, the Bible says they conquered by the word of their testimony. Remember, and I don't know what they said first. I don't know who remembers that verse. Uh, uh, they conquered uh, by also the word of their testimony. So literally, there's something... And the blood of the Lamb. And the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Apostle. And the blood of the Lamb. So the blood of the Lamb represents no judgment. It represents forgiveness, total mercy. You understand? So we always sing, there is power in the name of Jesus. So when you come to God and say, Father, I've done this, I'm sorry. And, you know, and you cry yourself out to God. You know, that's the blood. But there's also something called testimony. Testimony, I, I believe that it's for you. It's for your encouragement. How? Testimony goes like this. We prayed for somebody's hand the other day, something recent, and his, her hand started to heal. Make sense? And then that's a testimony that her hand healed. So because her hand healed, I know that when I'm having a back pain, God has healed me as well. Because it didn't happen too far off like in the Bible. But it happened today. It was not that woman uh, who had an issue of blood. It was a long time ago, you know, a thousand centuries ago or something, you know, more than a thousand centuries ago. So mm -hmm. think about that for a second. So the testimonies that are happening today are the ones that encourages us. Hence, the Bible always encourages us to meet. It said, don't neglect to meet frequently because that's when you get yourself encouraged because the devil will always try to isolate us. He always try to say, uh, to make us look at each other in tags and say, he's black, he's white, he's brown. Oh, he talks like this. <clears throat> he doesn't know how to talk English properly. Oh, he doesn't know how to talk Afrikaans. He doesn't know how to talk Zulu. He doesn't know how to talk Sutu. You understand? So now we are, we, we are concentrating on things that are, don't matter. But remember here, the Bible says we, we, we will conquer through testimony, through the word of our testimonies and by the blood of the Lamb. So remember that part. So I just wanted to add that. The floor is yours, ladies and gentlemen. You love it. It's, it's a Bible study. It's not um, a preaching. <laughs> Should I move on? I could just, hey, hey, Blue, and everyone, hi. Hey, hey, younger. Hi. Hello. 
Uh, I just I just want to say something on point one. Focus on him. Sorry, I had to leave, but I wanted to talk about that point. Just want to say some few things, and I think there's so much to be said about that. I mean, if you focus on God, there's so much He can do for you. He's willing to do it for you, but what He's looking for is your heart and your focus to be shifted upon Him. Uh, I think it's in Psalms 100, no, Psalms 37, verse 23, I think. It says, uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And I think if you shift your focus and put it upon him, he will lead your ways in everything you do. He will order your steps. And I think that's, I should say that only that for now. I just wanted to say uh, that first point that grabbed my attention. I think. And, and you know, um, I'm reminded of uh, what Pastor Jill said on Sunday, last Sunday. She, she said that um, remember, because the Bible is full of testimonies. If only you could remember the testimonies in the Bible when you face battles during the week. So the only best way to remember is to read the word. And the only best way to, to get more testimonies, in, uh, including personal testimonies from this guy family, from church, is to attend church on Sunday. You get more testimonies. You interact with people, engage with people. You know, you participate in Bible studies like this and you get more testimonies. And then that's, that's what will make you strong as well because we will conquer by the word of our testimony. And also give testimony. By giving a testimony, you are also declaring to the devil. Look at what David does here in the situation. He speaks it out. You know, in, in our case, we, we see the written one, but he speaks these things out. And the, the writers in olden days, they would write whatever the king said. So that's why we have such a written word today. So I'm just saying to you guys, let's, let, let's, let's engage with each other. Let's allow each other. You know, call each other, take each other out for coffee. Let's do, you know, uh, we have even men's breakfast coming up on uh, after the men's conference on the 19th. Let's talk about our experiences, what God did for us in men's conference. Let's do that. Let's get plugged in. Let's pray together. You know, let's, you know, let's get out there. Amen. Yeah. Uh, if anyone can add as well, um, the, the, the floor is still open. Um, if I can add something real quick. So there was this one thing um, during our Bible study that I found really interesting. So we all know Paul the Apostle. He went out and he pretty much built mega churches all over the world. Um, and the one thing that when I was doing Bible study this morning or Bible college, the one thing that really stood out was Paul never took the offerings from um, the Corinthians and he didn't take it from the Romans because they had a large supply of things that they could have given. But when it came to the um, Philemon church, he, he did say, why don't you come and give me an offering? And he's like, you're doing great because it was a sacrifice. And I think that's something we should also realize sometimes some things for us is really easy and God doesn't find as much joy from it as other things. But when you have to sacrifice yourself in order to have God's will, then God will be, find favor in you and find pleasure in, in you, your being. So it's also that thing of just realize sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice yourself in order for God to move in your life. Man. All right, let's move to the next slide, guys. Um, Chaba, do you Can want I? to say something? Yes. Yes, and uh, amen, amen to the previous amen. speakers. Um, the, 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 part of, the part that says the eyes, or the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are, upon, are open unto their cry. You know, um, and then continue to read um, he said the verse 5 and 6 where it says they look to the Lord 
and their faces um, were radiant. There's another um, testimony in my life that I, I became to, I sort of came to notice and, and see it amongst us believers. In another scripture, which is Acts, uh, Acts 6, 15, um, I don't know if anybody has it, but the background and the context is when they were staring, they stared up people of false witnesses and tried to achieve this Jesus of ours, you know. And I, I just wanted to read from it, um, struggling to find it. But ultimately, his face or Sean, or he says, and fixing their gaze on him, all who were sitting in the council saw his face like the face of an angel. It's something that happens amongst us as Christians when our our Savior Christ, you know, people start to want to question him or question the legitimacy of our faith. That it tends to happen that you know when someone is being found red-handed, they their faces go a bit sour or they yeah they get you know you can see that this one was caught is guilty, but when you're being accused of your faith and, and when when things aren't going your way and you just need um some you, you you somehow just get strength you know you somehow get um radiant in your face and you're not shamed any of these words that people are saying. No matter how it may seem far-fetched that someone's hand can be healed by a prayer or that a back pain just goes away by declaring, those kind of things just the exercise will become more radiant at the time of testing. Our faces shine like Jesus, like angels at that time. So meaning it's a reaffirmation as well on that side. I wanted to read it from Acts 16, but yeah, that, that's, that's a nice verse that I, I sort of feel as a testimony in my life too, to say that, that's, a, that, that's a characteristic of a believer. They tend to shine when they were supposed to be black or darkened. They tend to, to come up like angels. Am I even audible? Yes. You know? Yes, there is it. You know? And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit which he spake. They then suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stood up to the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against the holy place in the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And that verse there it is. And all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as it had been when the face of an angel. You know. And then when you look at the, the verse you just read also talking to the part to say they looked upon him and their faces shone and their faces were radiant. Talks to the time. Thanks. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Chava, for sharing. Thank you for sharing, my brother. All right. Um, I love, I, I, love, I, love this, I love the point that I shared at point number six. It says, he encamps around you always. And uh, the angel of the Lord encamps around you always. It, it's amazing, you know, because it's, it's, it's something also, he also says the same thing also, David, when he said that uh, in Psalms 91, those who dwell upon the... Uh, can somebody remind me that verse before I start writing my own Bible? Um, Psalms 91. Can you read verse 1 of Psalms 91? Um, 
Let me open it. Thank you. Must I read it for you? Yes, please. Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh, but uh, it says he that dwells in the secret place. Secret place. Of, yeah, oh, okay. of the most of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Amen. Amen. So it, it, it just explains why, why Moses, when he came down from the mountain, was shining, that he was so radiant and shining in the point that people were even afraid of him. Because the Bible explains, if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, and you abide under the shadow of the Almighty, you know, you become something else. You know, uh, your enemies cannot understand you because as soon as you pitch, they forget what they wanted to say about you. They, they start uh, uh, scattering <laughs> because you are no longer traveling alone. You know, you came with the creator of heaven and earth, you know. So, you know, just have that thought in your mind just for a second that if you encamp, if God encamps around you, yeah, yeah, that's all I can say. Yeah. All right. I'm moving to the next slide, guys. Yeah. All right. Verses nine to verse, verses eight to verse nine, still on Psalm 34. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, I love this verse. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. Wow. Sure. It, there's quite a lot of things that are said there. Uh, as I'm reading this, uh, I'm reminded also of uh, Psalms, 20, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Can we all say it out loud together? The, Lord, the Lord is my, my shepherd. shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> and it goes together with the last the last. The last uh, three words, uh, the last two words, leg nothing. Wow. And it, it seems like David kept on saying the same thing over and over again. Because think about it for a second. He died in his old age, and God did bless him. He did lack nothing. Even when he faced battles and battles, but he lacked nothing. But the key here is taste, see, take refuge, and lack nothing. That's the results that you get. If you are in God, you lack nothing. You know, it goes together with what Nathan was saying, that joy, Joy is not uh, like happiness. Happiness is for the happenings. Uh, it's, it's based on an event. But joy is something that happens in all seasons, whether you are afflicted, whether you're in trouble, but joy <laughs> is something else. <laughs> and, and the presence of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So, you better start wondering if you don't have joy. It means, because <laughs> God never leaves. It means you have, you have ignored the, the God that lives in your life because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So I just want to say to you today, let's take action. Let's be intentional about this. Taste, see, take refuge and lack nothing. Let's discuss this. Please jump in. I'm not going to point people. <laughs> I've had complaints in the past. <laughs> Hello. 
I think it's a self, it's, 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 it's a, yeah, it's, you've, you've, you've summed it up, you know, taste, see, take refuge and lack nothing, you know, these are the keywords that also um, exist in our same, um, that's 23, I mean, some 23, you know, mm. I mm. shall not want, I eat, you know, at his table, at the side of my enemy, mm. you know, um, mm. meaning I'm under his refuge. Mm. So I lack nothing. I shall not want, you know. I think if, if, anybody's, um, if, if anybody has ever le- lacked, they will know how, uh, even, even if it could be a lack of money, even if it could be a lack of um, just, let's say, resources, but the minute those um, needs and wants come under God and His care, um, the the weight on your shoulders is lessened. Even if the physical manifestation of that lack is not yet there, but there's a huge load. It's a, it's almost to suggest that spiritually yeah. you have received. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but the minute that lack becomes um, no longer your issue, and now you trust in God about it. You will you will see that this your 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 dinner table is already set up for you to to just get your, those resources. I think you summed it up quite well to say taste. You know, it needs to be it's a taste is a physical effort. It's not a you know it's not something that is out of this world in heaven. It's here. Taste here now. You know, see it now. You know and be under his wings yeah you remind me uh actually you remember uh the the israelite when they were crossing uh the desert where jesus um sorry sorry actually god is still jesus he's one <laughs> it's holy trinity anyway where yeah. jesus said to to the israelite uh go and inspect the land okay and guess what people did? They went over there and inspected the people. <laughs> <laughs> but the instruction was go and inspect the land, whether there is honey, indeed, <laughs> there's grapes. So they went there and inspected the, the, Amer- the, the, the Americalites. And they, they discovered that they are strong, they are tall. They knew how, how tall they are. And they inspected themselves. The worst of all, they even inspected themselves. And they came back yeah. all the way with the report about themselves and about the Amakelites. The land, there was no report. Ten people, no report. I can imagine them discussing. You know, it's like Nathan, Christo, and Younger, and Blue. They just came back discussing. Man. Yo, did you see? Did you see 6,000 men there in men's conference? Yo, man. And you saw that man, what there was fed. He, his, his stomach was jumping when he was worshipping. You know, <laughs> nothing about the word of God. What they came for the conference, there was nothing. Yeah. And Chaba comes in, comes in as, and he said, yo, God moved there. And God spoke to me personally on this word. Oh, you go there. Hey, did you see Pastor Brian did a surprise visit? Hey, did you see when Pastor Phil, how he was dressed? It was just so cool. And did you see a Louis Kuglo? I thought he was tall, but he's shorter, eh? In person. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, <laughs> you see now? So I'm just, I'm just in my mind. That's what I'm thinking. Is that what did God say? He said, go and inspect the oh. land. <laughs> <laughs> I just come back and then God start moving in their life. They grow. You are still stuck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mm. So, uh, funnily someone enough, someone asked a question. Yes. What was, which question? They say, "How do you taste that God is good?" Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> do you want to answer that, Nathan, or Chris, or anyone else? I mean, Chris, do you want to take it, or, or must I? Well, you can take it, Nathan, and I'll add to that. Okay, so how the Hebrew writers used to write books, especially in Psalms, which is 
songs, it's also known. Um, it's the way they don't, the way they say it is not literal, it's figurative. So when you taste the goodness of God, they're just referring to how great God is and how you can feel it and how wow. all your senses Experience. come together. All your all your senses come together to feel how good and how great the glory of God is. Yeah, I don't know, like man. We, it's, yeah, you're right. You're right, Chris. Just jump in, man. I, so, so, so when when listening to this and reading to the scripture again, saying "taste and see that the Lord is good," the first thing that pops into my mind is when you taste, you it's a, it's you you eat and you must be hungry for God, um, mm. and when you you must see <laughs> the good that God does, because if you don't see and this is also figuratively, if you don't see, you will miss it. Um, so you don't have to see physically, but you must be aware and experience the greatness of God. And that's done by being close to him. Otherwise, you might just miss the entire experience. Um, and I think it comes back to testimony, to experience and share experiences. Um, yeah, that, that's how I see it. Yeah. Versatile Nomsa, do you want to jump in? I don't want to say anything. I'm just excited about this part. <laughs> it's actually Versatile who asked the question. So it's it's coming up. As, I think a, a mic is giving her issues. So she just okay. typed the question. This is my view, ne? This is my view. How do you taste God? Wow, how do I explain that? Okay, for me personally, how I taste God is... In my head, there's a song that says, How great... He's our God, sing with me. And there's this tickling feeling that's inside my heart. Né? When I say those words, that how great is my God. So as soon as you feel that, as you're singing those words, and I say, how great is your God, there's this tingling feeling uh, that, that's beyond taste. That's beyond, it's, it's just, and then, all, and then you look at a God, how great he is. And you look at what God has done for you and what joy he has brought in your life. Then you taste that goodness. You know, and if you've been healed, if you've been saved, you know, and if you have seen his mercy when you judged yourself, that you deserve literally, if someone else was the dad, you would probably have get you would probably be hanging right now in a tree somewhere if someone else was a judge. But God, his goodness, mm. his mercy, his unfathomable love, his bottomless, not the muck and bean bottomless, his bottomless love. <laughs> it just overflows and and when you come to him there's that hug. I don't know. It's more than a bear hug. It's amazing. Like when you come to him, he doesn't reject you. The hug is more than the pastor's hug. It's more than Chava's hug. It's more than Nathan's hug. It's just that hug. Like, boom. <laughs> I got you, Blue. Yeah. Hmm. Cry. You know, I got you. I hear you. That attention, that, that availability, that something that even your own wife can never feel. That space that even your own husband can never feel. Uh, even your own girlfriend, wh whoever it is, your mom gave birth to you can never feel that void. You know, that's how I taste God. I hope it made sense. If it doesn't make sense, forgive me. <laughs> I'll pray for you. <laughs> Did we answer the question?
Oh. Okay, okay, so she says here, um, well, before tasting anything, we must eat something. Before eating something, we must see the food. From the beginning, God gave man food to see and to eat. In common is taste. I'm just wondering about the literal meaning of the word taste in the context as well. Going back to Genesis 1, 29 and 2, 9. That's what she okay. typed up. So shall we read that then? Okay. All right. Uh, whoever has it can just share it to the screen and then we'll, we'll dive into that together. Just share it to the screen if you have it. Wow. Wow. Okay, 29. Okay. And God said, See, I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be food for you. Okay. All right. Something comes in my mind, Ned as we, we, we discuss this together, is that remember the word of God, the word of God itself. Remember Jesus said these words actually. Wow, wow, Jesus talked about this. He said that men cannot live by bread alone. And he was talking directly to the devil. Men cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the father so if you look at the book of hebrews it says that the book of hebrews says every scripture is god's breath you know and it's approved by god so the word of god which is written text what we have in the bible now it's a written word of god so it, when you eat it automatically the goodness of god starts to sprite out of your heart you start recognizing God's, God's idea, God's goodness, and God's mercy, and you, you begin to enjoy this fullness. Hence, we, we, we are called to read the word of God. You know, not just listening to it on church, but alone as well, to spend time in the word of God, to eat it. You know, it, it has to, you know, yep. Yeah. So that's my view at the moment. And she says, amen. Thanks. Awesome. All right. I guess uh, <laughs> I answered the question. Wow. I love the question. It was awesome. Do you want to add? Anyone else want to add? Okay. Moving on to the next slide, guys. <laughs> wow. I'm so I'm so drunk of the Holy Spirit right now. I just feel like just shutting all things down and just start praying. Let's just pray for a second. Father, we thank you. Let Lord God, you are good. You are good to us, God. Not sometimes, not when you feel like it, but always, always, God, you are good to me. You are good to us, God. Hmm. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Oh God, you are so good. You are so good. Every day. You don't have mood swings. <laughs> you don't get grumpy like me. <laughs> you don't forget. <laughs> oh Jesus, you are so good. You don't get sick like me. You don't sleep like me. You don't lie like me. You don't fail like me. You are so, so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You don't take back what you have given me. God. You, are, you don't judge me. You accept me. Your arms are so loving and so complete. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sweet oh God, sweet Lord. Thank you. Yeah, Jesus, thank you. Hmm. Wow, this was something else. I'm going to cut it there, guys. I can never stop talking to my father once I begin. So I'm moving to the next slide, guys. All right. Okay. Can you read for me, Nathan? Um, okay. Job 34, verse 10 to 15. So listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do evil, for the Almighty to do wrong. He repays everybody for what they have done. He brings on them what their conduct deserves. It is unthinkable that God would do wrong, that the Almighty would pervert justice. Who appointed him over the earth, who put him in charge of the whole world. If it were his intention, and he withdrew his spirit and breath, all humanity would perish together, and mankind would return to the dust. Sure, hand take. But the important word there is listen. So since mm. you guys have been listening, discuss with me. I think one of the things that stood out while I was reading it was without God's breath and the breath of life, we would just become dust. We will come back to the earth and we will not be where God has put us and that just blows my mind like consistently it's crazy what do others say what do others say Are you able to hear, or is there somebody talking? Or should I start pointing people? No, sir. You have been listening. <laughs> what did you hear? Sorry. <laughs> There's no, no, no. Today I'm just absorbing. I'm, I'm just a sponge that's taking in so much. Okay. Um. And I actually just wanted to look up the meaning of this uh, in camp, you know, I, I've got it in my mind, but I just wanted to like have a, a definition from, from, from the dictionary because, yeah, you know, again, this scripture talks of how God encompasses us. He protects us um, that even when we do wrong, he will not, you know, cause us mm. to perish. Mm. And uh, that's because he's a God of intention. And um, again, mm. that whole thing of saying that when somebody does wrong to you, it would not be you, uh, um, or to settle the score. But yeah, God yeah. knows exactly how he will deal with situations like that. Yeah. So... Mm. Yeah, I'm just looking here. Um, I've got the dictionary open. Um, yeah. It doesn't really give... Let me just describe yeah, no, to this you. This doesn't really give a really good definition. Okay. Let me just describe to you. Sorry? Others, let me just describe to you the meaning as the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit describes it to me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, do, do you watch uh, those old kind of movies where the, like soldiers... Uh, wearing armor and all of that, like uh, Game of Thrones, things like that. 
<laughs> yeah, I've watched them. Okay, let me give you an idea. It's when, when God says and camp. Uh, yeah. When, when the enemy encamps around you, it doesn't leave until it has taken charge. Mm -hmm. So in our case, it's God encamping around us to keep the enemy out mm -hmm. of our territory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he doesn't leave no matter what until yeah. the battle has been won. Until the yeah. war has been won. Mm. Battles happen daily, but it, God will never leave until the war has mm -hmm. been won. And God never loses. So mm -hmm. the odds, because that's why um, um, the Bible, also, I think it's David who said that greater is he that's within me than the one in mm -hmm. the world. So True. if God is on my side, who can be my foe? Thanks, you know? yeah. So mm -hmm. when when God encamps around you, so it's, wow, it's done. True. It's just a mm. matter of time. No one can take charge of you. No one can possess you, you know. Mm. No mm. one can, can take you out. You are protected. Yeah. Yeah, so have that visual picture in your mind. Mm -hmm. He surrounds you, yes. So you are under his shadows. Yeah. So not, nothing hits you. Not the sun, Amen. not the moon by night. Nothing hits you because you are under God's shadow. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So that's my definition. Uh, I don't know what others would say. Please add. Um, yeah, I agree with, with that definition. Um, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, just about these couple of verses from Job. That about God is life continually. Um, sometimes, even though we are alive, we don't have, mm -hmm. we don't live really in our lives mm -hmm. without God being present or um, being in our lives. So He continuously breathe, breathes lives in life into us. Yeah. Um, and I think that's such a powerful little message here about. Um, we must just focus again on God and he will sort out any other evil all around us. It's not for us to take it into our own mm -hmm. hands to try and address because we will fail at it. We can't, we're not big enough for that alone, um, but God will do that. And we must just um, step back, focus on him and ensure that with him in his life, we will live on. Yeah, that's all I'm thinking about. Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah, so it's very powerful in the sense that I mean we all know. Hello? Yeah. Yes, I'm still here. Hi. Yes, we're here. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm just saying that uh, this this scripture that's um on the screen right now is yeah, no, it's very powerful because we all know the affliction that that job went through. So still for him to declare that, you know, uh, I will not be moved mm. by any situation or circumstance. I will be silent and, and let God move and do what he has to do. So it, it really speaks volumes about the faith that um, these men had. Um, they were patient. Uh, they persevered. And in their suffering and tribulations, they speak about some that is about all ways. So there's there's really a lot to learn from that. Yeah. And I have a confession to make. I meant to to mm -hmm. put um, Psalms 34, and I put the wrong scripture and. Somehow the Holy Spirit made it to be aligning with everything we're talking about. And when you said it's Job out loud, I was like, huh? Job? I'm like, oh my God, what just happened here? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh okay. Wow. Oh, God. I, I <laughs> thank God for that. It was not me. It was not me. <laughs> but just, just look at In my 
14 where it says um, it is with his intention and it I mean your entire thing is about intention yes Come on. Mm. Are you serious? Be oh my god <laughs> are you kidding me oh Jesus <laughs> Yeah, like God works in miraculous ways. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I mean, oh, guys. I mean, oh. Yeah, oh. So I want to begin to cry right now. Your mom is crying. <laughs> oh. Amazing. Amazing. What is this? What is this? Yeah. Goosebumps. Okay. Calm down, guys. It's just the Holy Spirit. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's move on, guys. Move on. We have to finish this. I'm so in awe. Okay. Jesus, thank you for this. I need to come down. Okay. Let's finish this. In record time. I hope it's the right verse this time. Yes, it's 34 subs. <laughs> Okay, verses 16 and 18 to 18, guys. Uh, can, can you read for me, Nomsa? The green side. You're taking it from? Okay, six, 16, 16 to 18. 18. Yes, ma'am. Okay, it says here, God is our defender against all evil. All we can do is cry and keep crying and never stop until we see the hand of the Lord. We are promised that God will help, not that trouble won't come. Okay. Mm. Can you, can, can, Oh, sorry, then, I was reading your notes. No, it's fine. It's fine. You just read what God <laughs> said you must read. So now I'm going to read what God said I must read. <laughs> the face sorry. of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from earth. The righteous cry, 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 cry. And the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh or is near unto them that are a broken heart of a broken heart and save such as be of the contract spirit. All right, guys, I didn't get a chance to define contrite, but I, I think it just explains it all, that we need to cry. You know, I've got a problem with the believers who are so strong that they don't cry. It's clinically proven that when you cry, you release toxins, toxins in your body that will help your body to heal, you know, and let go of the stress. So never shy away from crying, you know. You know, and invite me when you want to cry because I want to stay young as well. <laughs> cry <it> helps. <laughs> we just, let's just all cry together, you know. So we are, invite me in a crying party. We need that. <laughs> mm, can, I, can I say something about the crying? I, I think <laughs> yes, crying is such a way of showing vul vulnerability. Uh, vul yeah. but vulnerability. And you must be vulnerable um, mm -hmm. and open to be able to receive what is meant for you. So, yeah, I think it's, it's good to be vulnerable, to be open and be able to show that you can cry. And like you said, get rid of what's bothering you. And that's, I think, part of the growing process where the part of that storm that allows you to get closer to God and grow from that and be a stronger person on the other side. Yeah. All right. And, and besides, the first thing we learned when we were born, we cried. That's how they know we are alive. So, <laughs> so when you cry, you are alive. So let's run away from the myth Amen. that we are told when we grow up. Uh, it's the devil's myth that men don't cry. No, 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 we do cry. We cry even more than yeah. women. <laughs> All right. So if I may, it's actually kind of crazy. So I was going to bring this verse up like two slides back <laughs> yep. um like the lord was just like bring it up i'm like okay cool so it was like obviously still psalms 34 verse 18 and i just want to highlight it in general the lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit 
And when you are crushed and you are broken and you're crying out to the Lord, that's when he comes in and he's like, okay, you are leaving yourself. I can manifest in you. I can work through you. And even Jesus came to the point when he knew he was going to the cross, he left everything. He went on his knees and he cried out to the Lord. He's like, I don't want to do this. I'm crying. And Mm. it was said that he was crying so bad that blood started pouring out from his skin. That's how much pain and how much stress he had on himself. And yeah, like it's a clinical condition where you, if you have so much anxiety that your pores thin out and you start bleeding from your face. So, and that is when he had a profound peace come over him when God was like, I know it's a lot of stress, but you have to do this. This little bit of pain that you're going to have to endure for this short period of time, which we call life. I mean, what is 80 years compared to eternity? It's just a speckle of sand in a desert. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Don't forget that he even cried, Abba! Father, I don't want to do this no more. <laughs> Please save me. <laughs> Think about it. The God of the whole universe, the God of the whole universe, the whole universe, the creator of everything, crying. Just to add on the crying, Blue, uh, there's a verse. I just want to read a verse for you. Uh, I won't say much. I just want to read a verse. It's in Psalm, uh, Psalms. I think it's in Psalms 18, verse 6. It says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and I cried unto, unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. I just wanted to share that verse with regards to crying, that when you're in distress, you just have to cry unto you, just in agreement with you, what you guys were saying. So no holding back, guys. No holding back. Sky men, they cry. We all cry. Yeah. Let's not hold it back, man. Let's not hold back. Let's just let it, you know, let it rip. <laughs> Oh God, it's the hardest thing for a Zulu man to learn to cry. Because <laughs> when you grew, when you were raised, told uh, Indo Daikali in Zulu, you say Indo Daikali means men don't cry. <laughs> oh Jesus, help us. <laughs> All right, um, please add, whoever wants to add, add please. The floor is yours. All right, I'm moving on then to the next slide. Uh, if you if anyone faces trouble of maybe network, uh, do maybe as Versatile did. Uh, you just type your Try. questions, and then we've got Nathan as well to check while I'm busy slide if I don't see it on time, and we've got all the other people to just raise their hands and just speak. Okay, all right, moving on, guys. Verses 19. Yeah, it is some um, state for verses 19 to. <laughs> To 22. <laughs> All right. Um, Christo, can you handle this one? Yeah, I'll read it twice um, from verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Oh, he guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants. And none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. So yeah, God is our God and he is our redeemer. 
Yeah, that's quite, that's very powerful. Yeah. Wow. Any thoughts as we are discussing? This is the last slides, by the way. I, th I think again, for um, me, what I, what I get from okay. this is just stay true to what God wants for you and the path he has chosen for you. Um, yes, the devil will come in and try to distract you as much as possible in various ways, but um, we must just stay true to what God is and how he wants to protect us. Um, and he will redeem the souls of his servants. So we must just trust in him and have faith. That's, that's what I get from this. All right. Um, if I can add quick. So in verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, for the Lord delivers him out of them all. And um, the calling on our lives is so great and is so profound. And we're going to face a lot of opportunity from the devil where he's going to try and stop us. He's going to try and get in our heads. He's going to try and take us down because, because we know the truth of what's happening on the battlefield and that paints a big target on our backs. And it's easy to kind of hide away from it, but God will deliver you from all the enemy's attacks. You have to have the faith and you have to have it. Just that leap of faith and that commitment to God to cry out and be like, I can't do this in my own strength. I need you right now to come into my life, come into the situation. Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me. I know I have fallen on my life and it is great. So I pray that you will come and help me. Yeah. I think we, we are promised by God his presence always. His presence shall forever be in my, in my life, you know. And we are promised by God his attention. So as the scripture today it was talking about David made an intentional decision by saying, I will intentionally bless you, Lord. In spite of the enemy that was encamping around him. In spite of the siege, the siege that was coming at him. But he intentionally made a decision. I will bless you, Lord. In spite of this exam I'm facing, in spite of this uh, enemy I'm facing, in spite of this doubtful mind, but I would intentionally make a decision of making my praise to be louder than my fears, my worries, my lack, my insecurities. I'll make God louder. I'll glorify his name. You know, I'll dance, you know. I'll praise him. Yeah, you know? and and for me, when I feel doubtful, I I just put in the the latest uh, album a week, and I'll play it like I'll run, make sure I'll run probably for an hour and a half, so that it fills my brain, that my brain is so loud in my ear, that my brain is just even if I don't want to pray, but automatically I'm hearing the word of God being sang all over and all over in my head. And I start singing by force now, <laughs> you know, and, and my mind start turning around, you know, I start believing again. I start re being revived again. You know, I become awake as the album says, we must be awake. Amen. So, yeah. So God is on our side. He didn't promise that trouble won't come. Trouble will come. Even Jesus said, trouble will come. He even prayed about it. <laughs> he didn't pray that God would take us out of this world. He said, no, no, no. I pray that in this world, <laughs> he will keep them on this world. <laughs> Jesus, Mara. Hey, Jesus, why, why?
Come on. Let's just discuss quickly and then we can close for a night in prayer. Versatile, you have not said anything except you typed a lot today. Do you want to say something, my darling? Would you like to say something, Vesita? Okay. She is not ready to say anything. All right. Um, who else can I give? Uh, she just typed. I guess today she's typing. I assume she's in the lab. Scientists. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. All right. Are you able to read that? Someone read for us. Oh, she's typing. She's still typing. So if anyone else wants to share, wants to share. something so long, and then I will share what she types. Whoa. So God never said anything today. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to start from the beginning. No, I have a question. Okay, that's Probably good. I can get help on that um, verse 21. I've never seen this used in the same sentence. Evil shall, shall slay the wicked. <laughs> and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. Okay, that last part makes sense, except for evil shall slay the wicked. I would, say, I would think evil is the same. But yeah. That's my question. Evil shall slay the wicked. Blue, have help there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my brother. Okay, the, I'll first advise you. Never use this word to your enemies. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll qualify uh, like Pastor Joseph Prince will also, also say the gospel of death. He, he once made an illustration that um, he was telling a testimony of uh, a story of uh, a pastor that was preaching the gospel of death. He will come with a casket. <laughs> he will not say anything about love. He won't say anything about grace. He will stand in the street and he will open the casket and say, all of you will, got, will get in here. Those who want to give their life to Christ Jesus, <laughs> come now. Because <laughs> you will die. <laughs> And then people will be guilty and they will give themselves to Christ out of guilt. But they never stayed. He said one thing he observed, they never stayed. You know, and he worries when the ministry is being pushed by the gospel of death. So I say, never use this verse to your enemies or to your friends. <laughs> Can I ask a question? All right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I haven't answered this question. Eh? I haven't answered this question. <laughs> Can you, can you hold that question? I haven't answered this question. All right, let me answer the question, sir. At the best of my ability, I, I'm not a supernatural being like the Holy Spirit in you, Sitawa. So I will just do what the Holy Spirit gives me. If it doesn't give me anything, uh, you will tell me you didn't get anything. Okay, this is my view. Evil shall slay the wicked. And those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. David, I'm putting myself in David's shoes right now. He's barricaded himself in a palace. And usually the army, when it surrounds you, they will throw every curse word to you. Come out, we will lay you down. By tomorrow, you will do this. You know, this is David declaring out loud in his mouth, Ogeti, no evil shall befall me. 
this debt I'm going to pay. But yet the demand, the rate of demand has arrived. <laughs> Does it make sense? Uh, mm. I will pass this exam, yet you have, you have, you have just you studied probably 60% of the exam. There's no time to do the rest of 40%. But he's declaring in his heart. Oh, I'm going to pass this exam and I'm going to get the pass mark and I'm going to go through to the next module or the next class or the next year. Does it make sense? So this is David yeah. speaking out loud to himself and to people around him because probably people around him because he's a king at that time and people or oh, he's a leader he was always a leader he was always leading people so the mighty men of david were all led by him so they had their own people they were leading he was a leader so literally he was just speaking out loud as a leader to silence every voice that was shouting outside scaring him make sense Okay. okay. Nathan. <laughs> uh, just to bounce off that, let me ask you a question to see if I can help answer it. Okay. What is evil? What is evil? Like what, if, if I ask you what is evil, what determines what's good and what is evil? Mean. Yeah. What determines what's um, good? What do it's a, evil? yeah with with evil it's something that um is i would say ungodly cool so in that sense a lot of ungodly things is not necessarily wicked people make mistakes and they intentionally decide to hurt other people which is a wicked act so Ungodly things will come back to those who persecute and um, put pressure on Christians in general. That's yeah. kind of an easier way of saying it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Makes okay. sense. Uh, you, you were answered. Hundreds. Okay. All right, cool. Bianca. You can jump in and we'll go back to versatile one. No, I wanted to say something with regards to uh, to the evil shall slay the wicked, but uh, I think Nathan kind of sums it up. Everything he said, everything I kind of wanted to say. So yeah. yeah. Well done, Nathan. Thank you so much for saving us. <laughs> was it the top of my head. I was I was lost just. I couldn't continue reading this last this last line, but thanks very much. Thank you so much. It, it caught me off guard when I read it the first time as well. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Hectic. Like, yo, I'm just thankful the Holy Spirit is like, hey, this is the answer. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, must I read versatile stuff so long? Yes. Okay. So she says, how to be vulnerable in the presence of the Lord. Vulnerability to God stabilizes us, like allowing him to do what he said he would in his word. Most important factor is prayer. Remember that we cannot let go in our own work, in our, in our own, wow, oh, can't speak. We have to pray and remember that he will always rescue us. In Ephesians three sixteen to 19, Paul pray, prayed for the strengthening with the might in the inner man. The rooting and grounding in the love of Christ that gives strength to comprehend the breadth, length, height, and depth of Jesus' love. And she's still typing. Okay. All right. Um, Killing us here today. Hey? Deep. So deep, my brother. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yep. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think this ties in with what we were discussing around men crying and showing vulnerability. So us us um tapping out, you know, from 
transforming situation um, can be significant signified by a cry you know to say this is beyond me i'm tapping out and we let him go through that and then i think it ties in with that part to say how do we let how do we show vulnerability or how do we become honest with what we can accomplish by our own and what we cannot accomplish by um yeah on our own and which is everything we can't accomplish anything by our own yet um by the deeper understanding of um of what god is in our lives you know and how he gave his only begotten son for us by that alone especially after the fall of man you know um the only thing that we have to to continue on that as with the knowledge of Christ, I mean, um, faith is faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. So that that on its own, I I agree to say. It's it's through us comprehending the breadth, length, height, and depth of Christ's love that we're able to, you know, overcome. That's the time. Uh, Nathan, you can you can continue facilitating on my behalf. <laughs> okay, cool. Um. Yeah, I just want to ask you guys, you as a general question, just to challenge the way you think about like scripture in general, is when you read the Bible, do you generally research what words mean, because and what words are rep- repeated? Sorry, my English is terrible. For me. Um, like. I want to challenge you guys when you guys go read like, any book in the Bible. Go find out what verses are, or what words in the verse is rep- repeated constantly, because God is in the repetition of words. That's how He likes bringing to message to us. And sometimes just go deeper in what words mean, because the English language doesn't do the Bible justice. Because when the Bible says, fear the Lord, it doesn't mean fear as in I'm scared of the Lord. That fear means um, I will honor him. I will I understand his power and his magnificent. So I will submit myself under him. So yeah, I'm just going to challenge you guys with that. Okay. She sent another text. Um, no matter the storm we find ourselves in, we are too open wide our heart to him and his word, uh, continually allowing him access to every space. Wherever we are, pierced and cut through his love, wherever his tender affection has prevailed over our striving, our condemnation, our fears, and our resistance to him, they will be strong um, wherever his beauty, unlike any other, has but ruined us for lesser things. There we will be steadfast. Yeah, she's going to do for us as well. I... Hectic stuff. Hectic stuff. Um, all right, guys. Um, uh, if no one wants to add, <clears throat> to be wrecked by the love of Jesus is to be unshakable. Thanks, guys. All right, that was the last thing she said. Awesome. Awesome, man. Awesome. All right. Uh, thank you so much for coming through. Um, I would like for us just to pray. Uh, um, I got a couple of prayer requests the first one was that one i sent in the group 
and the other one <clears throat> it's prayer for business and the other one is prayer for jobs and uh, the other one is prayer for men's conference and uh, we've got another prayer for uh, for for healing and and I'd like to pray just for all the singles in our groups. Um, you know, the devil is trying to destroy our young women. We recently had a challenge where somebody thought the guy was single and discovered the guy was married. And it turns out to be somebody who's very, very, who's a pastor as well. So those are the challenges that we, we face, that the devil uh, is trying to ruin our women and and uh, and and uh, thank god that he has healed our women and uh, and it's not it's not going only for women men as well the devil is is luring our men to marry women who are not in christ and when they are in the middle of marriage and the woman tends just to destroy them. And then men now, they love the Lord, but they are broken to a state after a divorce to a point that uh, they, they are in state of confusion because of what happened. And as a result, the children born in those marriages are also broken as well. They're also affected by such, you know. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I'll ask... Christo to pray for families. I'll ask Sichava to, to pray for singles. I'm mixing it up on purpose because Chava is married. Uh, singles, <laughs> women and male. <laughs> singles, <laughs> female and male. I'm trying to make sure that you understand it's female and male because um, I, I want to be sure because in our days people, uh, you pray for singles uh, and then uh, is a female. He is he is a female, you know. So we don't want to pray for that. So we're praying for singles who are female and males. That uh, God will help them find if there's a female, find a male. If it's a male, find a female that uh, they can build uh, a marriage with. And uh, if they are called to be singing forever, we pray for that as well, because there are some called for that. But I think it's not really called, it's a decision, because if you choose, yeah, all right. So let's just pray for that, that uh, God will, will work it out. That's what you're gonna pray for, Chava. Christopher families. So you're praying for uh, marriages. I guess uh, after this, you're also gonna be married. <laughs> So. After, the prayer, after the prayer <laughs> okay i'm just messing with you okay <clears throat> and then um it seems like a vestal is mute so she's she's not gonna pray for anything and or maybe she'll lead us into meditation just to pause and think so it's gonna be Christo, it's gonna be chava and then nomsa please pray for men's conference uh Yes. And then, um, Nathan, what else did I mention? Okay. Uh, I'll pray for the issue that's happening right now with um, uh, the, the one that was put on the, on the group. No, no, actually, Nathan, pray for that, that was put in the group. And then, uh, Nomsa, men's conference. All right, let's get to it, people. Okay, Father God, thank you so much for this message that you brought to us tonight, Father God, and yeah. the intention that we must have in your name. I'm praying for families tonight and for marriages, for husbands, wives, children, and that we know no marriage exists without you, Father God, that we have to grow together stronger in your name, along with each other to better one another. And I'm praying that each family whether it's marriage or where it's family and friends or family mm. we were born into will mm. be based on your foundations, Father God. 
and if we know that any problem that any family faces, we can mm. come to you and we can help mm. and we can ask for mm. your guidance, Father God, so we can influence those around us that are struggling. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm praying for your hand in every marriage, mm. in every family, so that we know we are protected mm. and that we will stay firm in your ground and purpose, Father mm. God. And thank you mm. for your amazing love and blessings. Mm. Amen. Amen. Um, can you pray? Um, just continue the um, uh, Nomsa. Chava is disconnected for a sec. Namsa, can you pray for men's conference? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Mm. Okay, all right. Let's pray. Yes. Heavenly Father, I come before you this evening. I ask mm. you to lead all the men in the upcoming mm. conference. Mm. I ask you, Lord Jesus, that they go there with expectance yes. to meet yes. you, Father God. I yes, pray God. for a touch on each and every man that will be at that meeting, Father God. Father God, and I still pray that there will still be more that will be able to mm. attend, Lord Jesus. I mm. know you have a word for each and every one of them. Pray for them, Father God, as the heads in our family, Father God. Let them be men who are after your hearts, that seek you, mm. that seek to, to, to be like you, Father God, to live a life like yours, Father God. Mm. We pray for yes. men in our society. We pray for men in leadership, Father mm. God. Father God, let them mm. know you, that they serve you before mm. anyone else, Father God. Yes, so, Lord. Father yes, God, my we Lord. even pray for the, mm. for the priests and the preachers that will be at that conference, mm. Lord God. Father God, yes, prepare Lord. them right now that they have yes, that Lord. word, that word that mm. needs to touch our men, love, Father God. We thank mm. you, mighty God, for this opportunity, mm. Father God. We thank you for your grace and favor that you have upon our mm. men, Father God. We pray for mm. a change in society, Father God, that men mm. take up that place that, Father mm. God, you meant them to have. We Body bless your shelter. holy name, Lord mm. Jesus. We mm. bless you, we bless you, we bless you. And you say, Father, mm. be there for them. Mm. Meet with them. Allow mm. them to cry, Lord Jesus. It's yes, okay Lord. to let out the hurt, the emotions, mm. Father God. Because you are yes, there to Lord. heal them at that time, Father God. So yes, we Lord. We pray, Father God, that be there. Father God, mm. and I'm thanking you mm. right now that, yes, Lord, mm. they'll come back mm. changed. They'll come mm. back having Learn something Amen. from you, Father God, yes. because you're going to be depositing into their heart, Father mm. God. We thank mm. you. We bless you, mighty God. We thank yes, you. Lord. We thank you. We uplift your name. Up mm. high, Lord Jesus, we thank you. May mm. they be like David, Father God. Mm. David, who mm. loved him, loved you, Lord God. Yes, Lord, who loved yes, him Lord. Himself, Father God. Mm. David, who had patience. David, mm. who perse persevered through mm. sufferings and tribulations mm. lord jesus mm. let them be like david father god let them mm. be like the bold men in the bible father god mm. who sought after your heart father god jesus mm. we pray and we bless the men in our church we pray mm. and we bless all men in our society mm. lord god those mm. that are saved those that are not yet saved father god we thank you and we bless them for their lives lord jesus mm. because lord god for each and every one you have a purpose for them lord mm. god we pray mm. that that purpose father god comes to light. The mm. devil has no hold on our men anymore, mm. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We mm. glorify your name this evening. In Jesus' mighty name. Mm. Amen. 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 Mm. All right, Shava, you're next. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of yes. the Father, and of the, Son, of the Holy Spirit. Mm. What you have brought us together to do and to proclaim, Father God, right now is your name, which is our Father. You take mm. your power. We've saw the need for Father that we would mm. in, the, in, in the near futures, Father God, need to be partnered with whoever that we need to be partnered with that is desired by you, Father. According to your word, mm. let these happen. We proclaim them in our in, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm. We say that if there's a woman yes, out Lord. there and there is a man mm. out there, Father God, that right now seeks 
knowledge and six guidance father god yeah. and six to be a partner of them so father be the one that does it for them father god be the connector yeah. between the two so make sure yeah. that if that is what you yeah. wish according to your will father let us yeah. not be according to our will father and i thank you jesus christ for currently part of yeah. the so the people that you've appointed in their lives father they realize the full mm. extension of your might that they know that they're under your protection father that they mm. know that they can always cry to you father mm. that they can always be um on mm. your, under your refuge father god for any mm. time that they cry and they say to you mm. that they need you father and you're always mm. there for them my father mm. pray for the men right now father god that are feeling that they 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 would not make it out there father god that they they feel that they they'd rather be alone father god or that they feel that they would they would want to go to the opposite gender father god that you also reveal it to them father god that if they ask in jesus name anything shall be answered father according to your will father and also to the woman jesus father i pray to them, i pray for them too father god those that yes. feel that they want to go out there father god and explore and experience it mm. say to them father we say and we put them we cover mm. them in the blood of christ father and you say that mm. may you also father god show your guidance to them also father god that mm. it is not good it is not good for one to be alone and if mm. there's anything that is needed father god it is your love it is mm. that they must be inside of them mm. father god i thank you jesus that even mm. even when we pray right now we already believe and we trust that you would have already answered mm. them and you would have shown them lines and, mm. and and you would have given them granular mm. um foods and spiritual foods father god for them mm. to chew slowly according to how you feel mm. they should be father god the words from the book mm. father god as they are spoken that we mm. we shall forever sit at the table and eat father god mm. and i thank you jesus that right now when we pray in in the in the name of the spirit in the name of the father mm-hmm. the son and the holy spirit that you already have ordained things that will happen in our lives and you you mm-hmm. you given us prosperity already father god and we trust mm-hmm. that the word that you speak will also manifest in their lives and mm-hmm. father, in our lives as well in the mm-hmm. name of jesus christ amen 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 mm-hmm. all right um can you just jump in uh uh Nathan Okay Father God I want to thank you Father God that mm. you have brought this beautiful young girl to us Father God and although mm. she is having these issues with her mother Father God where she's verbally mm. abusive Father God I pray that against that Father mm. God Father God I just want to just pray that she will mm. withhold herself and her emotion and her anger let her not lash out and cause her mm. anger to cause her to sin Father God but I pray mm. that you will have a peace over her life father god father god mm. that you will not lash out father god that she will not go and mm. do something that she will regret later father god father god mm. above all else, i just pray that her mother will come to you father god father god that she will recognize mm. that she's in the wrong father god that verbal abuse is not the way father god but is love and mercy and reflecting the way you portray portray yourself father god and i pray that mm. this girl's faith will come father god and that it will impact her, her mother's life mm. that she will come to church and that she will give her life to the lord and imitate yes, Jesus yes. Christ through mm. the holy spirit father god and i pray that your holy spirit will move through them mm. both father god and let it be a testimony from both of them father mm. god so they can help people outside of it father god who are struggling with the same thing father god so i pray mm. that you will come into our lives so we can minister to people like this father mm. god I pray that you'll give them you'll give us the words that we can give it to them Father God and I pray that you'll give us the strength mm. to help them and carry them along Father God mm. it's not for our glory Father God it's mm. not be for us Father God but let all the glory be to you Father mm. God I pray that you will rework every bad situation Father God because you will mm. rework it for the good and the good for the trinity mm. and the good for the cross and you are almighty and we pray this in your awesome and mighty name mm. amen Mm. Amen. All right, uh Yanga, you, you're going to be next. Um maybe just for this mon- moment, that's just I'm just going to read the word and we're just going to meditate. Uh Vesta Tyler is going to lead us on that um quietly so because she can't speak anyway. She's muted today. Um 
I'm just reading the word. James 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them if they have sinned and they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Yanga, please pray for healing. Father Jesus, Father dear Heavenly Father, loving God, I pray for healing, Father. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, I pray that you heal each and every soul, Father. I pray, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, that you heal each and every heart that is broken, Father. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, I pray that you heal each and every wound, Father. I pray that you heal each and every sickness, Father. Merciful God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, I pray that you heal people emotionally, Father. I pray that you heal people physically, Father. Yeah. I pray that you heal people spiritually, Father. Please, please uplift your people, Father. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, please minister to the needs of your children, Father. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, I pray healing, Father, over this family, Father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, over this group, Father, over our church, Father, over our nation, Father. Please, Father, mend the hearts that are broken, Father. Please, Father, please be with each and every person, mm -hmm. Father. Heal them, Father, Jesus Christ. Please about changing their lives, Father. Please, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, you see each and every teardrop, Father. Jesus Christ, mm. you see each and every broken heart, Father. Jesus mm. Christ of Nazareth, you see each and every sickness, Father. I pray for healing, Father. Please heal your children, Father. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are good, good God, Father. You never fail, Father. You always deliver on your promises, Father. Please heal us, Father. Please heal us, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Heal your children, Father. Minister to their needs, Father. Whatever they need healing upon, Father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare, I declare and I decree, Father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that there is healing in this group, Father. That there is healing in each and every family of the sky, Father. And even those, Father, that hear the voice, Father, I pray that they be healed, Father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father. May your kingdom be healed, Father. May your children be healed, Father. Please, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father. Please heal the brokenness, Father. Please mend each and everything, Father. I pray, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, please bring healing, Jesus Christ of mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for today and for everything that you have done for us today. Let your name be blessed forever. Let your name be blessed always. And thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, people. Thank you so much for attending today. And God bless you. And uh, we love you guys. And let's keep moving forward. And never suffer as an island. Uh, Vestal and I are here for you. Uh, whatever you need, 
we'll do our best. And uh, we also have other leaders as well. You, we've got you. Uh, we've got Nathan, we've got Christo. Let's call on each other and where, whenever uh, such situations come. And let's keep declaring the word of God. Let's learn a lot from David. And let's open our mouth. If you can't speak, just speak the word and glorify God. Amen. 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 Goodbye, everyone. And thank you for tonight. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you.